praise god i just welcome all my brothers and sisters all the way from pakistan india nepal bangladesh really i'm excited to introduce my brother all the way from united states he is really amazing man of god and uh, he he just here and uh, he just going to uh, speak uh, speak really amazing things i believe that you will be blessed and uh, today uh, give me favor to share this broadcast in groups and you also can invite people um, uh, and um, also you can uh, just uh, uh, just uh, invite people and also join this uh, broadcast and i believe that if you are watching prayer tv in pakistan uh, india nepal bangladesh and uh, from uh, other uh, uh, continent and uh, destination we'd really appreciate your feedback uh, if you want to give us your feedback you can send us your feedback we really uh, love to appreciate your uh, presence and your feedback so my brother all the way from um, united states uh, united states texas so ek aapne choti si favor karni hai आपने ये ब्रॉडकास्ट को शेयर करें प्लीज शेयर करें और मैं खुदाम का दास होता हुआ आपको बताना चाहता हूं कि खुदाम ने अपने खातम को बड़ी बरकत दी है जैसे मैं खुदा का दास हूं इसी तरह पास्टर जोश भी खुदा के दास है खुदा के रूह से भरे हुए हैं और आज जब वो खुदा के कलाम को स्प्रेड करने वाले हैं और मेरा ईमान है परमेश्वर बड़े बड़े काम करेगा बड़े बड़े आज काम होने वाले इन द माइटी नेम ऑफ लॉर्ड जीसस क्राइस्ट सो आई जस्ट वांट टू वेलकम माय ब्रदर ऑथर स्पीकर इंटरनेशनल स्पीकर एंड वी रियली एनकरेज माय ब्रदर ऑल द वे फ्रॉम टैक्सेस यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स माय ब्रदर पास्टर जोश यस सर मैन ऑफ गॉड वेलकम यू सर ग्रेट गॉड ऑनर टू बी हियर विद यू and a uh, special greeting to everyone here on Prayer TV. God bless you. So glad to be here. Yes sir, so honored to have you and really um you know that uh I was just excited uh because you are a really busy person and uh, I just waiting for your schedule uh, to uh live with you because I think today is right time to live with you and uh, uh talk with each other on word of life show and on prayer tv so man of god uh, i think a uh, god timing is perfect timing yes sir we I can mean, believe, we can believe god timing is perfect timing and you are perfect man of god yes sir yes, what do you think about uh today today is uh, god is going to bless every person i believe that through you and through your teachings and your preachings really i just appreciate it man of god man well this is the day the lord has made and i will rejoice and be glad and I, it's an honor to be with you my brother and i'm very thankful to everyone that is a part of this network that is able i've seen several ministers and men and women of god who have been a part of prayer tv and been able to come together and and that's and that's just what it is we come together to pray to seek the face of God and um I know we've been friends here uh for quite some time but I've been seeing what God has been doing through your network and I'm very honored and thankful to God for this opportunity to be able to share with not just the people of Pakistan but the people all over the world but I just want us as right before we open up uh I want us to just take the time as we do and that the church does best and that is to pray the bible says as we know in the scriptures Second Chronicles 7:14 that if my people he didn't say the world he didn't say you know animals or creatures he said if my people will humble themselves it takes humility for us when we be, what is how do we know that uh, there is humbleness and humility when there's dependence on God that's when we begin to know that we're truly surrendered if we're depending on ourselves if we're depending on our own understanding and our own wisdom our own gifts and abilities and if we depend even on the anointing we don't depend on the anointing we depend on the anointed because he's the one that has anointed us to heal the brokenhearted to set the captives free 
to bring deliverance to them that are bound. So we are humble ourselves and we say, God, we can't do this on our own. Father, we can't lead this nation on our own. Father, what's taking place in the United States and our elections, Lord, we need you. We don't need a man. We need you. Our dependence is not on President Donald Trump. It's not on Joe Biden. Our dependence is on Jesus. Mm. The Bible says he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. So we humble ourselves and pray. We seek the face of Jesus. We seek who he is. What did Moses say? Moses didn't cry out, Lord, show me your power that I will feel you. God, give me the anointing so I can heal the sick. No, Moses said, cried out for one thing. He said, show me your glory that I may know you. So to be a believer and to truly humble ourselves is to seek the face of God, not seek power, not seek riches, not seek the material things of this world. Yes, God wants us to be blessed, but blessing should not rule our hearts. We should rule the blessing. We should distribute the blessing. How do we rule blessing? We distribute. We take the blessing of God. God uses us as a channel to be a blessing to someone else that needs to hear the gospel. Someone else that needs finances where we can bless them to do the work of God. That's what prosperity is. Prosperity is having enough for a divine assignment. What has God assigned you? So we humble ourselves. We seek the face of God. Seek his face. And we turn from our wicked ways. We all have come short. The Bible says we all have come short of the glory. We all have come short of the power. But we begin to surrender our hearts. We repent of our wicked ways. We say, Father, forgive us for we have sinned against you. Father, we don't say, God, if I have. No, I have sinned. We all have come short of the glory. We all have come short. And so we humble ourselves, pray, we seek his face, we turn from our wicked ways. And what, it, what is the result of that? He said, then I will hear from heaven. God himself said, I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins. God promised that. I will forgive you. I will heal you. I will deliver you, forgive them from all of our sins, and I will heal their land. I believe there's a healing that is needed, not just in America, not just in North or South America, all over the world. They're in Pakistan, they're in India, they're in Nigeria, and in, in, in Europe, all in the, in the United Kingdom, all over. I've been to Nigeria, I've been to South Africa, I've been to Europe, I've been to these places. And I'm gonna tell you, you know what every place has in common? We all have a need for God. And that, what is that? That need is love, because he is love. That need is peace, because he is peace. That need is joy, because he is joy, he is hope. So right now, let's pray. I know be, being saying a lot, but let's pray and let's begin to seek the face of God. And I don't want us to prepare our hearts. And as the Lord leads this time, we just have a few minutes with you. But I want us to gather together and let's pray and let's believe for God to not just heal our hearts. Because I don't ask God to just heal me. I want him to take every part of me because I know who Josh Gonzalez is. That's why I have to die a thousand deaths. I have to die to who I am so that he might live in me. So let's pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for these moments. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for the anointing that breaks the yoke. We thank you for the cross. We thank you for the blood. We thank you, Lord, for the faith that is that we take on, that we, we hold fast to faith. We hold fast to your word. Your word that's infallible. Your word that is sharper than any two-edged sword that pierces a divine soul and spirit. You said in your word in Hebrews 4.12 that the word is quick and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, we pray that every heart will be pierced through your word for, of your word. We pray, Lord, that every life that needs healing, every heart that is broken, Lord, that you will mend today, that you will restore today. I pray for restoration in marriages. I pray for restoration in ministries. I pray for restoration in every area of our life where we need a touch of you. Father, we 
humble ourselves. We come humble, humbly before you. And we give every part of our being to you. Again, we recognize that you are the way, you are the truth, and you are the life. And nobody comes to the Father except through you, Jesus. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. And we give you all the praise and all the glory. And we all said, amen and amen. Well, I'm Josh Gonzalez, and I want to thank you again for joining again in this time and a, a, a special honor to my friend Daniel here. God bless you. Very yes. happy to be here. And um, but again, I've, I've talked about what uh, uh, what is prayer? We Prayer is simply our dependence on God. When we depend on God, we talk to him. When we depend on God, we yield to him. We surrender. Surrender is a part of worship. You cannot have surrender without worship, and you can't have worship without surrender. It all goes together. And when you surrender, what does that mean? It means to yield every part of our being. When you're dependent on God, you yield not just your broken heart. God doesn't want just your broken heart. He wants your whole heart. He, when we get to heaven, God doesn't want to just know you 50%. He wants to know you 100%. And he knows the very head, the hairs that are on our head, the scripture says. But when we get to heaven, it's not going to be how big of a ministry did we build. It's not going to be how many books did we write? How many songs did we sing? It's going to be about, do we know the Lord? He's going to, many will say in, in, my, in his name, God, did I not do miracles in your name? Did I, did I not heal the sick in your name? Did I not spread the good news? Did I not feed the uh, feed the hungry? He will say, depart from me. I never knew you. Or he will say, well done, my good, my good and faithful servant. How are we good? We're good because he's good in us. We're not good by ourselves. It's impossible for us to be good all alone. God is good and all good by himself. And the moment God dwells inside of us, the moment mm. he lives inside of us, good begins to take place. There's been many times that I myself, I have not wanted to do good. And I'm a believer. I love God. But there's been many times that whenever I begin to just, uh, you know, yield to my own fear or yield to my own selfishness and, and I began to just look inward and it becomes selfishness. We, we, don't, um, uh, we don't focus on anyone else's needs because we're focused on our needs. We're focused on our problems. We're focused on our concerns. But when God moves in, a heart for the people, a heart for those who need a touch from God, it no longer becomes about ourselves. It becomes about the people. Pastor Daniel, I don't know if you've ever heard this. There are many people that say these words. They say, it's all about God. It's all about God. I'm going to tell you this, and you're probably going to probably want to shut it off, but please hear these words because this is a powerful revelation. Why did Jesus come into the earth? Did he come into the earth because it was about himself? If it was about himself, he would have stayed in heaven, been worshipped by the heavenly host and stayed on the gold streets. No, it wasn't about him. He knew it was about the people he loved. It was about his children. He came into the earth. He died on the cross, not for himself. He did it for you and for me. The cross was about you. The cross is, was about that you might be saved, that you might be healed, that you might be restored unto the Father, and that you might be blessed in him that we might live in blessing and living in blessing is not just financially living in blessing is is emotionally physically uh, in re our relationships that's part of living in blessing and so when we begin to pray we begin to seek the face of god it takes surrender i want to cover something that's happening right now by the way i I've been friends with Pastor Daniel here for quite some time and, and been following the network. Um, 
I am I come from a ministry here where we teach blessing and prosperity and the prosperity message has been totally misconstrued because it's been abused so many why do people you know misunderstand prosperity because they don't truly know what prosperity is if they truly knew what blessing and prosperity were they would not bash it we don't bash the blessing of god but we bla blast the the belief system that man has created so many people have created a false gospel of what blessing is thinking that it's about materialism but it's not about that it's about the father and how he wants to bless his children god wants you to not lack anything and you must be persuaded wherever you're watching anywhere in the world we must be persuaded if we're going to walk in blessing we need to be persuaded that poverty is not of god poverty is a spirit poverty is not just like sickness is not of god poverty is not of god god wants you blessed in every area to be a blessing and the purpose of blessing is that we might be able to accomplish the assignment in our life of what God has anointed us to do. It's not about money, but it takes money to take the gospel out. It takes money to buy a phone and be able to go live on Facebook. It takes money to put a website up and to be able to let people know that there's hope, that there is peace, and, and that is the source. Jesus is the source. And so we begin to realize that right now in this globe, there's so much taking place. There's so much confusion. I come from California and uh, it's a democratic state. It's full of socialism and liberalism and people that are wanting to follow in their own paths and what they feel in their flesh is right. And everything that the Bible speaks about, they're even keeping us from having services in California. I have family in California. And they can't. They haven't been to church in months because of the fear of COVID. But it's not about that. It's about a control. It's a controlling spirit that's trying to take hold. And and many pastors and churches are try, are being charged for going over the boundaries of what they're trying to establish as law in California. And. But what do we do as a church? I'm, it hurts me to see my family going through what they're going through in California, where they can't even go to church. They can't gather as believers and worship. They're even putting standards for Christmas and Thanksgiving, where we still have to be six feet apart. We can't gather with more than three families. You know that what that does to our upcoming generation of people and churchgoers, our young children, where they can't even get close to their cousins and hug their cousins. I mean, it's it's insane. It's crazy. It's demonic. But as a church, we don't fear. We are not called to live in fear. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but the scripture says, but of power, of love, and of sound mind. You have been called to live in joy and peace and victory. We are the victorious church. I want you to say that wherever you are, all over the world, I want you to say, I am a victorious church. You were born to win. You weren't born to lose. You were born to live in victory. And why is that? Because we live in Jesus. The Bible says that in him, we live and move and have our very being. So if we live in Jesus, we live in victory. If we live in Jesus, we live in healing. If we live in Jesus, we live in joy, in peace. I can't tell you how many times anxiety has tried to kick in in my life. I know what it means to, uh, I know what it feels like to have anxiety take over. I know what it feels like to have depression take over. I, I, I heard a great man of God who I love who said, I've never been depressed. I'm telling you, I believe we've all been depressed in some way. And we all, we all release it. We all respond to depression in several areas in different ways some people respond by closing in and not letting anybody talk to them others respond by overly doing it and but inside they're hurting 
they're laughing, they're shaking hands, they're with people, and they have to be with people because they're depressed. And if they can't be with people, they're they're become depressed. And there's others that are depressed where they just close themselves in. Others go shopping. I don't know about you. I love shopping, but so many people overly spend. I have an, a, a family member who I love and she overly spends. She's always buying, always hoarding material things because it's never enough. I'm gonna tell you, there's somebody watching right now and you're in the midst of depression. It's never enough, you're needing more. And, and it could be affirmation where you're always needing to be told how good you are and how good a, of a great job you've done. And you always need to feed off of people's approval. But I'm gonna tell you, it doesn't matter what man thinks of you. It's what God thinks of you. If God, if you have God's approval, nothing else matters. I'll say that again. If you have God's approval, nothing else matters. And in this nation and in this globe right now, there is such a fight for power. That's what this whole war has always been about. That's what this whole chaotic chaos has been about since the beginning of the creation of adam and eve even from lucifer it's always been about power it's always been because it was never enough lucifer had all of the authority he was the only angel in heaven that was given the office of of two angelic hosts that was the office of an archangel and the office of a cherubim and the cherubim in the scripture, it teaches the cherubims will hover over the glory, over the Ark of the Covenant. They cover the glory. They protect the glory. And the second archangel is a warring angel. He was the archangel. He was the protector. He was the worship of heaven. But yet he said in his heart, I will ascend into heaven and I will be like the most high. What are we saying in our hearts today? Yeah, we may not say I'm going to be like God, but we're trying to be like God by just having more than what God intended for us. We want more power. We want more of this and more of that. We want greater. We're trying. It's in a. I, I, I get so sick of watching sometimes on social media. I, I, I am. And I have their friends. We're in the same boat. We, we're seeing it. We're seeing a competitive spirit. People are trying to compete with one another. They're trying to be greater than this other ministry and trying to appeal greater than this person. I'm telling you, it's not about our charisma. It's not about our logos, our names. It's not even about the anointing trying to become greater. It's about Jesus and winning the lost. I have a little statement right here next to my phone to remind me to say souls, souls, souls. It's about souls. It's not about what we can do. It's about what he can do through us. And what is the assignment? So many times we try to label ourselves something that God never labeled us with. And I'm telling you, it is important that as a person of prayer that you recognize who you are in Christ. You were born not as a pastor. You were not born as a prophet. You were not born as a teacher, a preacher. Before God calls you any of these things, he calls you my son, my daughter. Before anything, you are his child. Before anything, you are his child. Because all of these things require responsibility and pull from you. Yeah, if God has anointed you to be a pastor, minister, preacher, teacher, whatever he's anointed you for, praise God. Do it with all of your heart, all of your soul unto the Lord. But do not forget that before you're any of these things, your identity is not found in a gift. It's not found in position or titles and your logos. It's found in Jesus. Right now, I want us to just surrender our hearts. And I pray that these moments have spoken to your heart. I haven't talked much about myself. I know uh, I welcome you to follow on Facebook or Instagram, but it, I, I, I want to, if I have to summarize my life in a simple way, if you want to know who Josh Gonzalez is, Josh Gonzalez is a broken person that is constantly dependent on God. If you just want to know who I am, I'm not going to tell you about where I've been, all the people I've met and the people I've been close to and 
the great places, great things God has done. Yeah, that's that's for another time and, and place, I believe. That's a testimony. But if you want to know who Josh Gonzalez is, just Josh Gonzalez without God. He's broken and he needs God. He constantly needs God. But in Christ, he is a new creature. He's He has acceptance and identity, security and purpose. We all need that. And I'm going to, before I let you go, I want to give you four things that you'll never, ever be able to get anywhere else, but you'll get it from the source. Are you ready? I want you to write number one, purpose. You were born for purpose. You were born to fulfill the purpose of your life. The Bible says that before the foundations of the earth were created, God knew you. Before you were even conceived, he knew you. He knows you so much. He's so detailed about you. He knows the very hairs that are on your head. He knows you. He loves you with an everlasting love. The Bible says that before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour would come, that he would depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. He loves you today. Call upon me. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. Call upon me and I will answer you. Call upon him. His name is Jesus. He's the way, the truth, and the life. Number two, security. You have security in Christ Jesus. Outside of him, there's no security. You might be married and you've been pulling security from your spouse. You might be in a relationship and you're pulling security and you're draining them and you're pulling energy, security from your parents, security from your pastor, security from your friends. I'm telling you, there's no greater security you could find outside of Jesus. It is in Jesus you find security. You find your purpose. Three, identity. Your identity comes from God alone. Your parents didn't give you your identity. They gave you a portion of, of what has made you in your personality, in your traits, in your mannerisms. But that's not who you are. You are the beloved of God. You are his child. Before you're called anything else, you are called the child of God. I hope you heard that. I got to let you go here shortly. But the next one here, give me one moment. Let me get my phone here to work. The next one here, uh, I mentioned about purpose, acceptance, identity. Oh, yeah, acceptance. You are accepted. Number four, you are accepted. You are accepted into the beloved. You are a born again child of God. If we weren't accepted, if, if, base, if God based the relationship based on our thoughts and based on our past on, on, on to save us and heal us. If he based that on our past, we wouldn't qualify. Uh, we would never be qualified. We would never, we would never receive it. But because of the mercy and the grace of God, he has called us into a holy calling. He's accepted you into the beloved. I'm just going to get this here. My, I'm trying to, you know, technology is just crazy these days, what you can do. So acceptance, purpose, value, you have value. I don't care how broken you may be. I know what it feels to be broken. I don't care how broken you may feel. You can never be so broken that God cannot reach out and pull you out. God is an expertise in broken vessels. And I'm going to tell you, God only uses broken vessels. Because then he begins to mold them and shape them. If they're so perfect and so in themselves, so filled of themselves, God can't use them. If a, if a vessel so self-contained, God can't use them. But if you're broken before God, and if you say, God, take everything. 
Lord, you see all of the imperfections. You see all of the junk, all of it. And I can't do this alone. We become dependent on God. We don't become self-dependent. We become dependent on the one who again is the way. I want to pray for you right now. In the name of Jesus, I pray against every spirit of infirmity. In Jesus' name, we cast it out of your life. We come against all sickness in Jesus' name. I'm not just talking about physically, but emotionally. In your mind, you might be sick, not just in your body, but in your mind. There might be some areas that you need true healing. You need to let go of bitterness and unforgiveness. I'm going to tell you, bitterness is like drinking a deadly poison and expecting others to die from it. Begin to resist bitterness, resist unforgiveness right now in the name of Jesus and be set free. We cast out all insecure insecurity and all in the name of Jesus, everything the enemy is trying to do again, all depression, all oppression. We cast you out today in Jesus name. Father, we give you all the praise and all the glory for what you are doing in our life. And Lord, we res we thank you. You said in your word, you resist the proud, but you bring grace to the humble. We humble ourselves. We seek you, our Lord, our Savior. Father, I pray for that woman watching right now, Lord, that she's just experienced brokenness in her relationship. Father, I pray, Lord, you bring healing. Mend every broken heart, every piece. We bring it back together, Father, in your glory. Father, for, Lord, for that young man right now that's struggling with pornography right now. Lord, we break all, every spirit of perversion in Jesus' name off of his life. We thank you that you set us free from every sexual addiction, from, Lord, all idolatry, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Anything that's idolatry, Lord, anything, Lord, that we're idolizing, anything, Lord, that we're putting before you, Lord, we release it. We lay it at the altar. We let it go in Jesus' name. Father, if we're idolizing our own ministries, if we're idolizing our own gifts and our own talents, Father, we put them at the altar again. Take our gifts, take our talents, Take our ministries. Take it all, Father. Lord, none of it matters to us. It's not who we are, but who we are is in you, Jesus. It's not in our education. That's not who we are. Our identity is in you, Jesus. I pray you be set free from every power of the enemy. No weapon formed against your life can prosper. For greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. And that last, I want to do this before I let you go. And Pastor Danny, I want to thank you for these moments. I want to thank you for this opportunity to be able to speak to all the wonderful people all over the world, those in Pakistan. I pray the blessing of God over your life. I pray, Lord, that, the, that his spirit will come upon you in a new way and that you will experience the blessing of God like never before. We cast out every evil imagination. All fear has to go. Fear of COVID has to go. Fear of sickness, fear of poverty, fear of death has to go. For we thank you, Lord, that you have given us the spirit of power of love and sound mind. In Jesus' name. Father, we love you with all of our hearts. Family, friends, thank you for being a part of Prayer Network. And I encourage you to, keep, to share this with your friends. Again, share it. Somebody needs to hear these words. And also for yourselves, I encourage you, allow the Lord to use you. Don't think your gifts are so insignificant. God always uses the insignificant things, the foolish things to confound the wise so that God may get the glory that we might look at the Lord and say, only God can do this. That's why he uses us. Because <laughs> in ourselves, we cannot heal the sick. We can't de bring deliverance to those who are captive. 
But in the Lord, that's where we see him move through our life. So in Jesus' name, I pray God's blessing over you. Let's just worship the Lord. Holy, holy, holy heart, you hold. Come on, just lift up your hands. This is a part of surrender. Just worship it. Just love on it. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. You just create that atmosphere in your home, in your car, wherever you might be. And you just worship him and say, The elders and angels bow, the redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Lord, we love you with all of our hearts. Come on, just say it one more time. The elders and angels bow. Jesus, the redeemed, worship you now. Lord, we love you today. Holy, holy, holy are you. you see, that's what we do. When everything fails, when you're feeling anxiety, when you're feeling overwhelmed, your victory is in your worship. Your victory is in your worship. Your victory is in your worship. Know that. Holy, holy, holy. Holy are you. Holy are you, Lord. Father, we love you today. Bless your people in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Love you, Pastor Daniel. Thank you so much for these moments today. Yes, sir. I love you too, man of God. Such an amazing man of God. Really, I just... Mm -hmm honor and a privilege to have you and really i'm just touched oh wow by your teachings really sir we just appreciate your teachings and your your teachings really educate us and uh, we can understand brother really we just uh, feel holy spirit so man of god uh, really um, I uh, thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ to give me opportunity to host you. And uh, uh, I just uh, say to some people, um, you are the best uh, people and you are the best pastors and leaders and doctors who just lead us uh, through, through presence and through, through anointing. And really, sir, really, sir, I'm touched. So, man of God, uh, thank you so much for your time. You just uh, uh, giving us uh, your precious time. So, uh, uh, let me, let me ask you about uh, situation in United States because uh, right now we can understand situation in uh, United States. Who will be the next prime uh, president of America? Who will be the <laughs> right now we are believing for biblical values we're we're declaring for and we're believing we're standing by president trump we're believing god yes. you know because you know he stands for biblical values and i'm not voting for a man i'm voting for the word of god and yes. that was when i went to the polls and i voted i didn't say okay do i like god do i like Trump? no it's not about a man it's about where are we going as a country and our nation and we're believing for our biblical values to be uh, honored, where does uh, where, each of these two men, who do they honor? You know people based on their fruit. And I judge people by their fruit and, and I honor. And so we are believing regardless of what decision is made, regardless if it's Joe Biden 
or if it's Donald Trump, regardless of it all, we have a mission and that mission doesn't change. And we already should be taking that mission more than ever before, regardless of who's president. I don't care who the next president might be, who the, who the next leader of Congress, uh, more than anything, our dependence needs to be on Jesus. And I encourage all of you watching right now. Yes, let's pray for these elections. Let's pray for the values to be that we need to stand for that. But more than anything, let us be used of God to take his love because we need a fresh baptism of the love of God more than ever before in America, more than ever before all over the world. I encourage you with that. Thank you for this, brother. I've got it. Yes. Welcome once again. Uh, brother, what would you like to say last words? Uh, because you know that you can just uh, uh, educate over people and viewers. Yes, sir. Last words. Yes. No. Come, no come on. Um, and I'm not trying to write. I just have an appointment to get to. So I want to make sure I make it on time. But I definitely um, my last words to everyone today. I, I encourage you be a part of this network and be a part of what God is doing. This is just one of many that God is using to take the gospel out. And we're here to preach, to teach, to heal the sick. That's the Great Commission. And more than anything, let us be about the, the Great Commission. One vision, one mission, that's loving people to Jesus. Amen. That's what I'll say. Amen. Thank you so much, man of God. Have a blessed day. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, brother. God bless you, everybody. Uh, so uh, we uh, thanks to our Lord Jesus Christ. Abhi amare saath Khuda ke bade achhe khadam America se the aur unhone jo Khuda ke kalam ki baate share ki hai amare saath apna time spend ki hai. Main Khuda ka shukr karta hu ki ham aaj bahut sari parkto ko apni zindgi mein pa chuke hain. और यकीनन आप इस ब्रॉडकास्ट को लाइक कर सकते हैं शेयर कर सकते हैं और अगर आप हमारे प्रे टीवी फेसबुक पेज के ऊपर हैं यूट्यूब के ऊपर हैं तो आप पूरी अगर यूट्यूब के ऊपर हैं सब्सक्राइब करें और फेसबुक के ऊपर हैं तो लाइक करें और फॉलो करें और शेयर करें अपने दोस्तों के साथ हैव अ प्लेस्ट डे